Oops, sorry, here we go. This time I'm going to go over some of the problems on the metrics and measurement worksheet. Main thing to remember here is the whoops. Most important thing to remember on this is the the um, chart up here at the top has the conversions, the different metric prefixes, mega, kilo, hecta, deca, base unit, deci, centimilli, and micro. And if you'll notice that every one thing to the left is bigger than the things to the right. And so any two units that you want to compare, you can compare just by picking two. Like for example, let's do um, centi and milli as you're familiar probably with centimeters and millimeters. Well, in one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. So how you can use this chart to your advantage is to remember that there's one of whatever is on the left side to little ratio, many of whatever's on the right. And to find out how many many is, is to see if these prefixes are next door to each other or if they're further down. Two units that are right next door to each other have the 1 to 10 ratio. So for example, here's centi and milli, so that means there's 1 centimeter for 10 millimeters. Or there's 1 centigram for 10 milligrams. Whatever your base unit is, meter, liter, or gram, 1 centi is 10 millis. They're next door neighbors. Okay, 1 centimeter, for example, is 10 millimeters. Probably one that you already know then if you have relationships of things that are two doors down from each other like say deci and milli hop hop that's two hops over so that's one of deci because it's on the left but it's a hundred of milli that's on the right so for example one decimeter is equal to a hundred millimeters okay so two hops over is two powers of ten or two zeros you can do the same thing with like milli and let's say liter you say here's your base unit is here. It's one, two, three hops over from base unit to milli. So one liter, for example, is our base unit, is equal to one, two, three powers of ten milliliters. Okay? So that's how you can use that to your advantage. So all you have to do really is memorize this and then you can know all your metric relationships that you need to know. Some people will have made up a mnemonic to help them remember something like, here's one that I know, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. There's also King Henry died uh, moaning, laughing, groaning during Christmas morning. There's a whole bunch of different ones, so you need to memorize that. Now let's practice using those with dimensional analysis on the problems that are down on the bottom. So these are, I'm going to pick a few of these problems and work them out with you. Let's try number one. Number one, 35 milliliters, problem number one, equals how many deciliters? Okay, so 35 milliliters over one. I need milliliters to cancel out, and I want deciliters to be on top. If I look at my metric chart that we just went over, I see that one decimeter is equal to 100 millimeters. We wrote that before, so that means that one deciliter is equal to 100 milliliters also. Uh, oh, never mind. Go ahead. Okay, so if that 100 milliliters is to one deciliter means that I'm doing 35 times 1 divided by 100. So in other words 35 over 100 which is 0 0.35 deciliters. And this is a metric to metric prefix conversion just converting between metric prefixes so I'm not introducing any new uncertainty into the problem and therefore I haven't introduced any need to do anything different with my significant figures. I have two sig figs in my given and I still have two sig figs in my answer. Number two, 
950 grams is equal to how many kilograms? 950 grams over 1 times, draw my line, I want grams on the bottom to cancel, kilograms goes on top. I know that gram is a basic unit and kilo is three hops to the left. Let's look at that on the chart. So right here, kilo is one and gram is over here. So that's one, two, three hops over. That means one kilo is a thousand grams. One kilogram is a thousand grams. So on here, one kilogram is a thousand grams. So now I have 950 divided by a thousand, which is 0 0.95 kilograms. Now you might wonder why didn't I put the zero in? Well, 950 is two significant figures. Remember, zeros at the end never count, and they didn't give us a decimal in the problem originally. So if I only have two sig figs in my given, I can only have two sig figs in my answer. But now I have to show the decimal because I'm using a number that's less than one. And if I put that decimal in there, I can't write the zero or else I have three significant figures. So that's my final answer. Okay, how about, are there any more? Let's do number eight. Something about number eight has units that are a little unusual. So might be one you don't know. This is 0 0.005 kilograms over 1 and I'm going to DAG, that's decagrams. Okay, kilo here and deca here are two doors down, so that's a 1 to 100 relationship. 1 kilogram is 100, whoops, not, not 1,000, 100 decagrams, DAG. So, one kilogram is 100 decagrams, which means I'm doing 0 0.005 times 100, so 1, 2, comes out to 0 0.5 decagrams. I have only one sig fig in my given. It's a metric prefix problem. I have only one sig fig in my answer. And that's all you have to do.